Yeah, Jim Magna, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, I'm the Programme Development Manager for the Driving for Better Business scheme. And just a heads up, that is a scheme um, that is, is effectively a government-based scheme. Um, it is uh, linked to uh, Highways England, which is now known as National Highways. They've changed the name. Um, but uh, as, as somebody that was in the uh, logistics industry for 30 plus years before being asked to get involved with this, uh, it was a scheme I wasn't aware of. And I'm pretty sure that most people here probably aren't aware of it. Um, so thanks for uh, Natalie and for Ian and the, the team uh, giving me the opportunity to introduce it today. Uh, the first thing I'll mention is that we are strategic partners with uh, uh, the association. So that's um, uh, the association has been very uh, proactive in supporting any kind of way of helping to reduce work related road risk. And, and really, that's what we're there for. It's a, a free to access program that really I just want you to be aware of exists and give you a bit of a steer through what it's looking like as a as a program. And then uh, ultimately, you know, just give you some resources that you can use uh, your free of charge and uh, an access via um, the BPCA as well um, as a, um, a route to helping support you as managers, as owners, um, as, uh, you know, people that uh, organize drivers as part of your business. So um, driving for better business, government back scheme. Um, and it's free of charge, all there for you to use, not not accessed or tracked by anything government wise. It's genuinely it's as uh, uh, sensible to uh, access as I can advise you to. Just quickly in terms of context, um, there's two parts to what I do. Driving for better business covers all urban roads. It covers the strategic network, but I also work for the commercial vehicle incident prevention team. They are um, um, a strategic body that is really trying to reduce uh, accidents, um, fatalities, serious injuries on the network. And it's quite unique, really, in the uh, across the world that it's the you know one of the as ourselves in Australia that actually try and uh, educate to avoid incidents, um, and that's a really productive thing. But you know, sort of headlines. The strategic network for your information, 4,300 miles of motorway and A roads, that actually effectively doubles up into 10,000 miles of carriageway. Um, the real bit on the bottom left hand side, the sensors, including traffic sensors, that's the bit that's growing all the time. It's becoming a digital world. Um, you know, they're, they're also responsible for smart motorways. I probably could spend probably, you know, Plenty, plenty of time talking about that as well. But, you know, it's all part of the network and, you know, it is becoming increasingly digitalized. And one of the things that we're trying to do within DFBB is access data that you wouldn't otherwise see. So it's a kind of cultural change. We've come in from a business point of view to try and get you access to the information. Um, you know, there's probably 10% at any particular time of the network that's being used for enforcement. So those red X signs and those way motion sensors, all these kind of things, there's information out there that we're uh, developing a program to get access to. So it's, it's to advise you before you get prosecuted. So, you know, it's a kind of different way of thinking, but uh, one that I think will get better results. So just in terms of context, uh, it's a question we always like to ask. Obviously, I won't um, you know, ask everybody here, but just in terms of uh, context, I'll just have a thought. What do you think the odds of winning the national lottery are? And then what do you think the odds of a work-related injury collision are today? And I'll, I'll put you out your misery. It's one in 45 million for the national lottery. And um, whenever you buy a ticket, you think it's going to be you. So you always think you're in with a chance, uh, being it to win it. It's one in 500 when it comes to a work-related injury collision, and it's double the normal rate of fatalities. So what we're really trying to do is focus on where the major risk is. You guys will have major risks within the activity you do, within the, you know, the, the uh, equipment you use, 
but actually probably the biggest risk is your your drivers driving to and from the the various calls on the day so we're just trying to get focus on that and the reality is that a truck driver probably thinks he's a truck driver he's professional you know he's passed his qualification um he has a tachograph that kind of thing a van driver usually is something else so a van driver will be an engineer a fitter you know a plumber you know uh, uh, you know a professional in any other kind of area but probably never sees the van as something that they do professionally within that so we're trying to focus on that because the question i always start with when you're looking after a team of people or you know individuals or yourself you know when you're starting today how confident really are you that your vehicles are all roadworthy that your drivers are qualified i.e they've got the the driving license and it's it's still a valid driving license that they're currently fit to drive um that you know in other words your health and the various drink and drugs, et cetera, requirements, and that your drivers aren't currently being distracted because guess what? They've got a lot of technical kit in that uh, vehicle that they need to do and they've got customers to go and see. And you really, it's the challenge that you have as a, you know, a controller of those mines and those, those vehicles. You know, you, you've got to try and think how best am I, uh, you know, in a position to think that those are all, you know, the right in the right um, the condition, and the drivers are fit, you know, and, and healthy on the, on the day. So they're the kind of things we try and focus on to give you tools to try and support you with. And as a context to it, can I just sort of point you to this? So this is the risk to other road users from each mode of transport, and it's you know, again, it's into context. It's per billion. Uh, uh, miles traveled so you know it is relative to that but what it's always pointing towards is the risk to other road users that come from light vehicles and vans which is predominantly you know what the uh, uh, association and its members vehicles are going to be to other road users so that's to passengers to pedestrians to cyclists to car drivers etc it's double from a van so when we're dealing with the enforcement side of things, and we are not the enforcement side of things, this is the kind of thing that drives their activity towards van enforcement and truck enforcement, because the risks are going to be with other people. Um, the, the reality is with the driver as well. In an incident, the driver usually takes avoiding action. So it's usually somebody else that actually gets the uh, unfortunate results of any incident. Hence, why it's to risk to other road users, but it maybe gives you a context of of why the focus is on vans, and obviously the van market is growing uh, and will continue to do so with the you know the onset of uh, digitalisation elsewhere. So, behind the scenes, we've done some uh, investigating into what are the causes of those, what are the the factors. And none of these will be particularly a surprise to you. But the driver-related ones are the top ones. So they usually involve driving issues. So that could be fatigue. It could be distraction. It could be failure to look properly. You'll see the, um, the highway code changes that are due to come in next week. is talking about the prioritization level and the Dutch model of opening doors with your left hand, etc. cetera. Um, so it's, it's speed and it's I'm, I'm in a hurry. And we tend to take the view that with van drivers, we can try and influence that more so. Um, you know, a truck driver should know they've got a driver CPC qualification. You know, they, they are you know, doing that on a daily basis as their primary activity. With a van driver, we're trying to give you the tools to help educate um, you know, and to, to support because there's, there's still the excuse that, well, you know, I, I'm not the professional driver, but actually that's not how enforcement would see it. We do tend to be exasperated by the roadworthiness issues, um, insecure loads, overloading, axle overloads, obviously tyres, lights, the kind of standard things. If I quickly show you the, the next slide, again, I suspect there's no surprises um, here in terms of, of where we're looking. Load security, tyres, lights, they're the three main ones that we see. 
as major issues. Um, you know, so again, as an earlier focus, they should all be captured within the driver's walk round check. So, you know, driver focus on these kind of areas is where you're going to get your best results. Um, we've also produced with the BPSCA, so you, you've actually got um, your own van driver toolkit. Now, again, can I just point you towards it? This is a free to use um, version of uh, information tool, really, which we're also going to support with um, additional e-learning and, and video tools. Uh, they've been currently out filming this week. Um, so it's looking at particular issues. So we've got 36 subject matters from vehicle road worthiness, use of seat belts, speed limits, driver's hours, you know, it'll be fatigue, it'll be distraction, it'll be, you know, everything you can really think of is in there. If you can think of something else, by the way, when you do use the pack, um, again, free to download and free to use and circulate, uh, please use it. Um, and there's the van driver toolkit reference down there. Um, you know, please feel free, but if you can think of anything else that's of value, please let us know and we'll, we'll be looking to develop in it. It's a weird thing. I'm working for an organization that now is funded rather than, you know, having to create the profits to do it. And it's, uh, it's quite unusual for us to be able to do that. So we'll try and use the money wisely that it's a practical benefit for you. So it will be supported by various tools. These are all coming our way. So again, if you're unsure about how to educate it uh, and how to communicate it, you know, the information will be there to help you do it. And the traffic officer giving headlines as to, you know, what the issues are is, is usually a good way of, of uh, reinforcing the message. So in terms of the driving for better business part of it, what we're trying to do from a management perspective is, is point you in certain areas. So how it works. I mean, obviously from legislation, the company shouldn't do anything that puts drivers at risk. So your kind of work-related driving activities, you know, shouldn't endanger other road users. So it's really about the appropriate policies and procedures. What we've created is um, a gap analysis tool. So it'll ask you sort of 10 questions, you know, um, you know about standard areas about you know your systems and how you control your drivers etc and then we'll break that down into to more detail and, and look at the the gaps that you're operating with so you know do you have a driving for work policy or have you communicated it to your staff we then have a, a benchmarking tool which is talking about cost benchmarking so again you can put data in there i'll show you a quick look at that now and benchmark accident costs. Um, we've mentioned the van driver toolkit. There's a whole series of resources that we'll go through. But in terms of the, the gap analysis, so are you aware of your responsibilities? Do you have a driving for work policy? How have you communicated it? Um, do you have a driver check system? Is there ongoing driver management? Do you come back and check you know, what your drivers are doing? Likewise, with your vehicle defect management, are you checking that? So if you get a defect, what is the process for, for following that through and getting repairs uh, and getting the vehicle back on the road? You know, what are the risks of the costs against the business? Are you keeping reliable records if anything does go wrong? In my previous role, I was the uh, general manager for membership at the Freight Transport Association, and that was pretty much about compliance. Um, you know, record keeping when things go wrong is, is, is pretty critical. Um, and then in terms of the, the management process, are you reviewing that and then are you going back and, and checking again? So that's your gap analysis tool. The benchmarking tool, this is the top level part of it again. So you can stick in your average number of vehicles, your mileage, total number of claims, and then total cost, and it will give you a result against the average against industry. So that's really top level. It will break down into further detail. So you can go via light vehicles, et cetera, uh, cost of uninsured repairs. So there's a, there's a tool there that you can check. Do you think your operation is as uh, you know, cost effective as it could be in terms of accident uh, control and, and cost control of those accidents? 
We then have a, a, a big online resource tool that you can access. It follows the kind of procedure that I'll, I'll go into, but you know, we're looking at procedures, culture, engagement with your drivers, um, improving performance, because at the end of the day, this will all help reduce costs. So the less cost you spend in terms of damage and um, you know, cost of the business, then you will improve your bottom line. And that's ultimately you know, how you all exist. Um, demonstrating leadership, the BPCA are doing that clearly in terms of how they share that and with good practice, and we'll be working together. But when you hit the site, there's all these tabs that you can go on to and start looking at the various um, partner resources in the, the various health and safety exec resources. There's videos. There's, there's all sorts of good advice on what to do and to use that. So, you know, all examples of, of the resource bank that's in there. And then you'll see examples here. So, um, you know, accident frequency rate, um, rates through to blind spots. Um, and, you know, when the actual um, uh, official um, uh, sign-off of the, uh, the changes this week that comes to, to prioritisation, um, you know, of uh, the passengers, sorry, pedestrians being the highest priority this week, um, and then truck drivers being the lowest priority. That gets signed off this year, and that will be in here as, a, as an example of information that you can access through that. One other area, really, that we, we are focused on, I'm really pleased we, we won a, a Fleet News Award on this last year, but you may have heard of the organisation camp, the Campaign Against Living Miserably. It's really an anti-suicide campaign. Um, you know, we all know in our industry and the, the age profile of the staff that we have, it's um, a high prioritisation area. Um, we have tools that you can download. Obviously, we focused this on uh, measures that relate to driving. So feel like you're taking a wrong turn, unload, need some direction, etc. cetera. Um, all of this is free to access and to use with your staff, and which is, you know, really quite an important message in terms of, um, you know, supporting, you know, your, your, your team. So... In terms of the, the business itself, so what we try and do is quantify that in terms of, of, of cost as well. So good driver, you know, will, you know, have a, a, a base cost to you. Then there's what we consider to be an unnecessary cost of, of poorly managed drivers. Fuel. So, you, you, you know, obviously a poor driver is usually going to relate to various things. One will be a heavy foot. Um, so your fuel costs are going up. There'll probably be greater damage to tyres. Your servicing costs are going up because your vehicle's being treated in a way that it's probably never been designed to be. The insurance costs are coming up because of the risk that you're, you know, putting yourself through in terms of, uh, you know, your claims procedures and your claims history. And then in terms of damage. You know, we, we, you don't put brand issues there or customer issues there. These are all the physical costs of, of um, poorly managed drivers. So you probably all recognize the good and the bad within your own teams. Um, but clearly the good, it's always important to recognize the good. They're, you know, a key part of what you do and, and should be recognized. But it does pay you to put some attention on the ones that, you know, probably are the ones that are costing you money. Uh, and, and the benchmarking tool probably gives you a good idea of how you might understand the implications from your, your damage perspective. But, you know, there is you know, the service delivery, there's the uh, customer uh, response, all these other factors that you'll be well aware of in, in your businesses. In terms of longer term, some of the other things that we're doing is, is looking at the specification. So, so the, you'll have a mix of vehicles that you operate with. But in terms of just as a context, when you're looking at the standard of vehicles at the minute, um, the, the orange graphic there shows you the what we call the safety deficit. So when you're buying your cars, 
you know what they're coming with. You've got all your AEB equipment, there's um, blind spot detection, there's your airbags, lane departure warnings. Have a look at the right hand side and see what your standard spec van produces. So one of the things that we're trying to, um, you know, I suppose it's called create an arms race with the makers is that actually we want them to raise the standards of van um, safety, um, you know, quite clearly as, as something that should be a minimum to reach, whether it's in a, it's in a car, it should be in a van. Um, so, you, you know, you need to look after um, your staff and, and clearly you can spec up a vehicle, but we, we think there are certain things that should be a minimum standard and that vans should be treated in the same way. So that's something that we're doing um, as an aside, uh, as part of what we're doing to try and influence the, uh, the industry. Um, we also, just as a heads up, we provide the tractor units as an, an item. It's, um, be, you'll see some enforcement activity where vehicles are on the network. It's, um, uh, you know, tractor units that are unmarked that are being used to film activity within cabs. Just for, for background with that. So that would be, you know, misuse of mobile phones, et cetera. Um, that's usually a 40, 30, 30 split. So what we're finding is 40% of the issues come with trucks, 30% with cars and 30% with vans. So it's quite a, a balanced view. Um, so there's, but we provide the trucks for the police to use um, as part of that enforcement activity. But again, it's to try and educate and get the message. Some of the things we've seen, by the way, you know, people eating meals on the lap, you know, with you know knives and forks and plates whilst they're driving, you know, loose parrots hanging around, a, a, you know, a cab. There's weird and wonderful, believe it, believe it or not. Um, so what we're trying to do is work with key influencers, and you'll see some of them on there, and obviously your own association are a key part of that, to try and get the message out that that's really not what, you know, um, should practice that should be discouraged, um, that we're trying to educate to get, you know, everybody home safe at night. And, uh, you know, that's really our message. Let's do what we can to try and get, um, you know, everybody, your own people safe home at night, and and you know, provide you with the resources that hopefully can help you, uh, you know, uh, go about your job on a, a more effective basis. And you know, what's not to like when it's free of charge? Okay, so uh, yeah, that's me. Um, if I pass you back, Natalie. Yeah, Any fantastic. Questions? Thank you, Jim. That was uh, that was great and well timed as well. We've got a nice uh, ten minutes for some questions there. I mean, just to pop my screen up so I can see. Oh, you've covered lots of things uh, for everybody. It doesn't seem anyone's got any questions for you. So you must have covered everything uh, fully. Someone's put a comment in the chat. Let me just see. I can see it's um, uh, someone here says, Amy, couldn't agree more on the need to increase standard safety features on vans. Um, I've been shopping for a new van and I'm so disappointed with what is on offer compared to what you get in a car. Um, surely the bigger the vehicle, the more safety features you need, not less. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, it's taken for granted, unfortunately. You know that you know it's been deemed to be a, a tool of work, and therefore, if we can get away with a minimum, we'll, we'll get away with a minimum. So I think there's there's a lot to be said for you know the. It's nice having the the comfort part of the vehicle, but actually, you know, much better to get home safe at night. And if there is, you know, one in five hundred means, guess what? We've got two hundred and fifty people on today. You know, there's a, there's a pretty good chance that somebody's going to have been involved in something, you know, yeah. you know, within our own companies. And, you know, we really want to try and avoid um, that as best we can, or at least have the confidence at the end of it to say, you know, we've done what we could. We're, we're taking all reasonable steps. You know, we know the, you know, our staff are out there doing a different job, you know, driving. I had a question. I, I was on with a, a contractor a couple of weeks ago and he, he was mentioning about telematics and how, and it was a, a, an engineer and saying that, you know, I'm being persecuted. And, I, and it's a, you know, it's a word I've not heard used before in my old role and, and this. And I said, look, 
clarify what you mean by persecuted. And he said, well, the company's put this telematics in, which are now telling them every time I go over the speed limit, every time a harsh break, you know, it's persecuting me. And I, I said, look, you do realise the reason why they're doing that isn't just to be awkward. Mm-hmm. It's to make sure that you're safe to get home because when you've done your day job, mm-hmm. you're thinking of that vehicle as a company car to get you home. So yeah. he was thinking, how quickly do I get home at night after I've, I've finished? Mm-hmm. And it's a natural thing. However, the evidence shows that's double the risk of any other road death, so of any other death, you know, within the workplace is on the road. So mm-hmm. you, the chances are that you switched off a little bit and you know that's where the biggest risk is going to be so what we're, we're always trying to focus on that part of it where it is how do we just get people thinking you know calmly coolly you know and and just making sure that they you know realize that the the risk to them and to others is is probably at that point yeah and i think they're working late at night as well exactly yeah and that's it and i think that's key because another you know, I've been a technician before, I've been an assessor traveling miles. And when I speak to our members, quite often I say, oh, Natalie, you know, I've done a thousand miles this week. Um, you know, they might just be covering a small area, but, you know, they're back and forth or motorways or carriageways, country lanes. And, you know, tiredness, I think, is, is a big thing that's maybe not talked about as often enough because, you know, we all get tired. And of course, driving is a is a is a is key to be with it, isn't it? It's key to be um, on the ball and not tired. And I think that's tricky to bring up um, with a with an employer to say, look, I've had a really really bad night and I'm worried about driving. I don't know what what do you recommend with regards to policies around you know tiredness or how to discuss it really? Yeah, I think tiredness is is quite a key one, especially if you 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 know there's distance involved. So you know some of your your members will be carrying out work that's out, you know, isn't just a two mile drive home, you know, it's going to be distant. So what tends to be, I think it's important to give people options, not as a default position, but, you know, if you are tired and you think it's a risk, you know, you should be considering, you know, can they have overnight accommodation as a special? Can they get, you know, can they get a taxi home? Can they, you know, can they do other things? Because, Really, you know, fatigue is a is a killer, mm-hmm. um, and and therefore, you know, when I've had this discussion, it's always about the case of well, are people going to take advantage of that? Then are they then going to be taking out accom- overnight accommodation, etc.? <laughs> no, it is an exception. You know, I mean, you know, the driver of the vehicle has the same responsibilities as the the company. You know, they should be fit and healthy, mm-hmm. and you know, they they shouldn't be under the effects of any other. You know, I mean, you've obviously got drink requirements that have been around for a long time, but yeah, alcohol, you know, requirements, but obviously drug requirements, you know, drug issues are, are, mm-hmm. we're seeing increasingly on the road. You yeah. know, these are all things that are very difficult to monitor and control. But, mm-hmm. you know, the bits that you're looking at is have a have a policy in place. That's the bit the health and safety executive would be coming back looking at. Mm-hmm. You know, they would be looking at what was your policy? Did you have something in place? Did you give that driver an option? You know, and, you know, has the, you know, if, if you don't have that, then there's a presumption that you, your policy wasn't, you know, uh, in place. You know, within your policies, you know, who's responsible for the policy? Mm-hmm. How often is it updated? Mm-hmm. You know, are you speaking to your staff about it? Are you getting their engagement in the, exactly. you, know, the you know, they will come back. It doesn't mean that you then have to give, Every you know, like worst case scenario treated as a standard, it mm-hmm. just means you've got a plan. And if anybody's then coming in, in the worst case scenario, guess what? You know, the enforcement uh, agencies are looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, what went wrong? So, Absolutely. Yeah, the yeah. bits I just encourage you to take a look at. Good uh, guidance. Do that plans in place. And right. also, you know, is there a defect report checking system in place? Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, all of us were car drivers, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, ask the question with, with no answer here. If anybody went out in the car this morning, did they actually check, the, you know, have a quick look at the tyres this morning before they went out? Mm-hmm. You know, did they check anything? You know, yeah. it's, it's kind of what the highway code expects you to do. Mm-hmm. And just one quick message on the highway code part of it, there's, there's you should do and then there's you must do. The must do is always backed by legislation. So you must stop at a Pelican crossing. 
you know, if you don't, there's a piece of legislation. The should do is basically an industry standard. So whilst it might not have legislation behind it, it's saying if you didn't, you should have. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, um, things like the highway code changes today, that prioritisation of the vehicle turning off the carriageway into another carriageway is something that will cause, you know, some challenges, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to have to give way to pedestrians. Yeah. Now, if your drivers don't know about that, then they need to. You know, Absolutely. So keep an eye on that one for this week because that's what it will be enforced again. Right. Tom here, um, there's a couple of questions coming now. He's asking, um, uh, are you aware of a similar organisation covering Scotland? Uh, we 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 will work with Scotland. So it's it's funny you said it's like Highways England is national highways. So Transport Scotland is a um, is a partner with us. So we will we will assist. So if it's terms of information, it's generic. Obviously, legislation is slightly different in terms of Scotland and uh, and England. But you know the general message on work related road risk is is the same. So please use the resource, and if you need any other direction. Then, then give me a. In fact, it's got my colleague Mark Trimmer at the bottom, but it's Jim Magnet Highways England. Mm -hmm. UK. Um, stick me an email in. But yeah, it, you know we're we're again about driving and what related road risk. So you know mm -hmm. we'll work with anybody. Great, good stuff. Um, Charlie here says, um, do you know, please, if the pedestrian priority has been trialled, what was the results um, as he's concerned if there was an increased risk, risk to vehicle users from sharp brakes in front of them? Yeah, the, the, I mean, it's been driven by European um, examples. So in Holland, et cetera, this, this is Netherlands. That, um, yeah, th these are all uh, procedures that are in place and priorities that are in place elsewhere. So they've taken it on board from from there, um, and it's a big education piece. It's, it's not like you know changing from the left hand side of the road to the right hand side of the road, but it's still fairly fundamental. You know, I'm 60 year old, and that's all I've ever known. So mm -hmm. as I'm approaching a junction, I I now have to re-educate myself to think that I now have to give way, um, and there is a risk of activity. You know, if people aren't concentrating. You know, if somebody driving behind hasn't left enough space and you're the one that pulls up to give way, guess what? That could be, a, a you know, a, a risk. So mm -hmm. I suppose the end point is let's make us not, you know, be party to that kind of incident. So I think the best message is try and get that education out there because, you know, once it's in place, it's in place and that's, you know, you'll be held liable. I mean, yeah. you know, if you run into the back of somebody, you're always going to be liable in any case. Um, so, mm -hmm. but they'll not be expecting it, then that might be a challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, more of a, a comment here and a similar question to what we've had from Michael there. But yeah, just saying that, you know, they feel that it's going to be causing more rear end accidents and, and abuse from other drivers wondering why you stop midstream to let, you know, let someone cross. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's about everybody knowing about this change and you you stick into those rules and then someone behind you is like, what are you doing? I, I, you know, and yeah, it can cause it, issues. It, it is. It's, you know, I mean, I, I don't think it'll be straightforward, but you know, they're, they're the rules that have been put in place. So we kind of, you know, we're all obliged by it. And mm -hmm. I think at least if you're on the front foot and telling people, you know, then, you know, that's, that's minimising the risk. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's all we can do as a sort of managers and owners and team leaders. And, you know, we're, we're just trying to educate to make sure that people don't, you know, have somehow missed it as a, as a change. You know, mm -hmm. and, and there'll be people that won't be looking at the news, and I know it's been fairly blanketed this week. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, you know, it, I expect mm -hmm. examples of that, those very incidents to be happening. Obviously. As with any, as with anything, you know, um, any any industry, certainly health and safety as well. Ignorance is never an excuse. So. Um, you know, just because we didn't know something. Um, uh, Michael's just asked a, another, just to have your comment on it. Um, Jim, is the new rule give way to pedestrians when turning left? What's the rule if turning right? Is it the same? It will be, yeah, you give, you give uh, again, good check, because it hasn't been, signed, it gets signed off this week, by the way. So it, it's all being published, but it hasn't been officially uh, signed off. So I suppose ultimately, you have to wait for the detail, but it, you know the principle applies. It will be give way to pedestrians. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, good question. I probably need to check that when it comes through, and you know, with the 
the the turning right, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, work on the same basis. If somebody's about to you know cross the road, then you're not going to give way to them. But yeah. sorry, you 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 should give way to them. However, um, I'll check that one. I'll yeah. I'll put a caveat on that one. I better check the words when they come out. Great, fabulous. Well, there is one more question that's just popped up, but we're just one minute over time. So if you don't mind, Jim, I don't know if you can see the Q&A bit down the bottom. If you were to click on that, you can see that it says type answer just for um, the benefit of the the person who's answered, asked that yeah, question. Absolutely. Is that okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much. That was that was great. And lots of interaction there. And yeah, that was great. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. Thanks, Jim. Bye bye. Great. Okay, guys. I think that was a yeah, really important discussion. I mean, driving, blimey, is probably actually half of the job that you know as pest controllers and, and assessors in the BPCA. You know, we we do a lot of driving, and it's a uh, such an important um, thing to consider. So again, get in touch with Jim if you've got any more questions, and also get in touch with us. We've got all sorts of resources, and um, anything we don't have, we can try and help you create. So um, yeah, keep talking about it.